So far on my channel, I've shown you how to overclock your CPU, your GPU, your memory. But did you know actually, you can overclock your monitor to get that extra smooth gameplay and more FPS equals more smoothness when you do that? Let me show you how it's done. Now in my example, I'm using an Acer VX5-591G laptop as well as an Acer XB240H monitor, which is a slightly old model, which doesn't have HDMI 2.0 or 1.4, so it does not support high refresh rate at 1080p, although it does support 144Hz over DisplayPort 1.2, but we don't have that because the laptop only has HDMI and you cannot convert it to DisplayPort. Now because we are using laptops, usually laptops with dual graphics cards such as Intel and Nvidia or AMD and Nvidia, the display resolution is actually controlled by the integrated GPU. In my case, it is Intel HD graphics. So we are going to be using the Intel graphics control panel. But if you have a desktop or another machine which only has a single graphics, you would use the control panel for that graphics controller. So for Nvidia, you would use the Nvidia control panel. And for AMD, you would use the AMD's Radeon software. All you need to do is just go to the display settings and look for the setting called custom resolution. I'm going to demo it on the Intel software now. To get started, just download the latest driver available for your graphics card. That will increase the chances of getting a stable overclock on your monitor. Once you do that, just open its control panel. For me, it's the Intel Graphics Command Center. Open it by just searching for it. Just type Intel or AMD or Nvidia and you should find. Then click on display. If you're using multi-monitors like I am, laptop display and an external monitor. From the top I've selected the external monitor on my HDMI. Now click on identify if you don't know which one is which. Then click on the little plus icon next to the resolution and fill up the details as shown. Or if you know what you need or you know your requirement or the hertz you're aiming for, enter that number. For me, for me, I'm on 60 hertz, so I'm gonna try 72 at first and keep going up if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll keep going down. Now I am starting with this aggressive 12 hertz overclock on my monitor because I know my monitor can do 144 hertz. But if you're on a laptop screen which is 60 hertz, I would start somewhere in 64 to 65 range and go lower if it doesn't. Now, after entering 72, my system worked normally and I checked the monitor OSD it actually showed that the overclock is working. So I kept going up, up and up. So 73, 74, 5, 6, 7 was the lucky number. That's where it stopped. So that's the last working refresh rate stable for my laptop and monitor setup right here. So when trying 78 hertz, you would get this weird message. So if you get this message on the monitor saying input not supported or something else that is specific that your monitor can't read, just stop and go back. So that's it. My monitor can do 1080p 77 Hertz, which is way smoother than 60 Hertz and it makes a difference in game. All that's left to do is just restart your system. Check everything's working stable. Another thing to check is when you open a game such as GTA 5, you can actually select the refresh rate inside the game. Some games like Rocket League use the same refresh rate as Windows. Some games will ask for a specific refresh rate to be set. So just set your most stable refresh rate there. For me it's 77, I'm gonna use that. And bam, it's working great. Way smoother experience for literally nothing. Just using the same cable, same everything. Now I know what you're thinking. This guy can do 77 hertz on his monitor, so I will be able to do the same. I'll give you one disclaimer before you just jump on and try all sorts of different custom refresh rate and resolution. Overclocking of any kind voids most of the warranties associated with the products, so laptops, monitors, etc. So beware of what you're doing and don't go for crazy numbers to start gradually. In my experience, I've never had a product fail because of overclocking. I hope you understand the risks and responsibility associated with overclocking and there's a chance that the product you're using might fail. Anyway guys, smash that like button if you learned something new. Consider subscribing to this channel and dinging that notification bell if you like more content like this. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.